Howdy doodly do, boys and girls. Uh, I'm adding this before uh, a couple of quick starts I've just recorded because I didn't have permission to say this. Um, the version I'm using, and the reason why you can't see up there the title bar and stuff, is I'm using, um, well, I suppose you could call it an internal beta of Mudbox. Um, it does exactly the same as yours does. There are no tools in this one um, that you haven't seen, I can promise you that. Uh, and it handles the same as yours does. This was simply to, um, well, I can't actually say what it's for. But anyway, Let's get on with it. Everything that you'll see in the quick starts from now on, using this particular version, is perfectly clear will be done in your version. Okay? Let's go on with the quick start. Howdy doody, boys and girls, Wayne Robson here. Right, uh, to follow on from the um, Ambient Occlusion uh, quick start, uh, how to beat the Ambient Occlusion map, uh, I thought I'd use this model, this sort of Gigi esque alien head thing done from a cube. Um, I'll just show you a little trick um, using. No, I mean, inclusion maps. This is one that's baked out. It's made from a cube, okay? Now, I've added two colours here, uh, just for the sake of it. Now, what I want to do here is control A and C to copy that, alright? I can now use this. If I just put that there, you see they're originally brown. I've changed the colours on this. Alt and click on the mask. Control V, alright? Now, as you can see, all the colours are different, alright? So, We've got it the wrong way around there for what we need. So we could just invert it, and there you go. So let's just try some levels on that there. Just darken it down a little bit. Um, put maybe a hue and saturation on it, and desaturate that particular colour like that. Change the hue a bit so we can have something that can tell the difference, you know. Um, just try to find something halfway decent, to be honest. In fact, we'll colourise it. Like that there. Take this one here. So I'll just quickly merge all those. Take this one here. Um, now, if I wanted to sample that colour there, we just darken it down a little bit like that. Maybe a little bit more saturated uh, into there. Like that. And we now have it dark. I think we could actually go darker than that. So let's just go darker and more saturated. And there you go. Now I want to save this out, uh, and then we'll reload it in Mudbox. And you'll see it gives us a bit of a start for texturing, okay? Okay, we're in Mudbox. Um, so we've created that there. And uh, you can see how we've got specular maps and all sorts of things painted for this. Uh, no bump map as yet. And load that into there. And you can see now we have an absolutely perfect match. Now I've got none of the filters on here. I can add them if I wanted to. Um, and you see in flat lit mode, that's a wonderful start for a texture. In fact, we can actually paint it without having to worry at all um, about the shading. So let's just take that there, we'll take it up, maybe a little bit more in the green spectrum. In fact, I'm not quite sure of that. Take it like this. you see if we just create a bit along the top there. Would help if I had the correct fall off. We'll just turn that down a bit. See down maybe I don't know about twenty or so, and just quickly just go across there. Just put some highlights in. Don't look special, you know. Just to illustrate that we can use it as a texture base, nothing more. Um, then we can first take it and just darken it down a bit. Add some stamps and stuff onto it, and just quickly give us a lot of hard randomize on. Uh, like that, you know, um, use it to begin the beginning of a texture. This is not going to win the awards, this one for sure, um, but it illustrates the point that now you've got the beginning of a texture. Um, you could use that texture there. Um, I create a bump map, as I mentioned before. <coughs> Excuse me. Take this one and then duplicate it selected and then quickly. So I'll have to drag this window down. Just clear it all the way down there. Put on. If it's the wrong way, like I think it is there. You go outwards. Add a material. Take the bump depth there. And of course I can play around with the bump depth. I'll exaggerate it way over the top just so you can see it, right? And you can see there that um, we've got the beginnings of, um, of the texture that you see. There's the bump up there. So 
So maybe something along the lines of that. We could, of course, use that um, in conjunction with speculars and everything else. Okay, uh, so as you can see, you can actually use your ambient occlusion map as a mask. Now, it wouldn't have to be a solid colour. This could actually be two separate textures that you've painted, or it could be a tailable texture you've used and just filled you know, each layer in Photoshop. It literally is endless, okay? It's absolutely endless what you can do here. Um, so hopefully that uh, inspires a little bit um, some of the things you can do with an ambient occlusion map, okay? I'm William Robson, I'll see you all next time.